This is your live update. Although the Sulphur Bottoms Hall was damaged in the attack by a mysterious woman, the damage has been repaired. We expect it to enter the maelstrom surrounding Forbidden Island any time. Preparations are complete. The crew ready. The Sulphur Bottom is gathering speed, preparing to penetrate the cloud of mystery surrounding Forbidden Island. Following the attack hours ago, we were all asked to disembark and return to our ships, where we stand watching Von Blucher embark on his greatest adventure. And what may be humanity's greatest adventure? Will he succeed in reaching Forbidden Island? We'll continue with live updates throughout the day. Final check complete. We can get underway whenever you're ready, sir. Understood. Well then, everyone, are you ready? We won't let anything get in the way of a story. We're not like those wimpy TV reporters. You're really going to go through with this? Yes, I am. I have to. Well, if you're going to do it, then do it. I mean, we've come this far, right? Thank you, Barrel. All right then, let's go. Main engines online. Main engines online. Set course for the center of the island. Engage. Looks like they're intent on ignoring my warning. Weapons activated. Remember, I don't want them hurt. Understood. Stabilizers on this ship are amazing. You can hardly feel the wind. I'm impressed. Huh? Unidentified object approaching from above at high speed. Sir! Activate defense grid. No one will stop me. Not now. I've got a bad feeling about this. Vaughn! Order the Drakes to go to yellow alert and stand by. more. Just a little closer. Fire! Now! <gasps> Fire repressors activated. Engines offline. She's out of control. Emergency escape pod launch mechanism damaged. What? No. Now you've really done it. Apologies, Mistress Yuna. We should retreat. They probably won't crash for a while at least. I'd hope to stop them before they got this far. being sucked into that storm! <gasps> Gramps! What should we do? We can't take the flutter in there. And we're almost out of fuel. We'll have to set down on a nearby island. We can figure out what to do then. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part two of Mega Man Legends 2. There's not much we could do to help Gramps from the air, I wonder if there isn't a way to land on that island and get to Blucher's ship that way. And then it hit me. Look at this! This is a drop ship, a ship my father designed years ago, especially for landings in rough atmospheres. If we use this, we should be able to land on Forbidden Island. Gramps always told me never to build a drop ship, but still... This is an emergency. I know he'll understand, right Mega Man? Oh yeah, I'm sure he'll understand. Just like how I did when you sold my shining laser without telling me I... Uh, gotta let it go, gotta let it go, I know. Either way, folks, now we're outside of the flutter and we have landed on Kalinka Island. And uh, if that name sounds familiar to you, that's because you must have played Mega Man 4. There's a character in Mega Man 4 known as Dr. Cossack, and his daughter was named Kalinka. Well, this island is named after that character. So, hey, Kalinka Island, how about that? And I always have a soft spot for any kind of location that is winter-themed and also peaceful and very tranquil. Uh, maybe it's the Canadian in me, because I live in snow and I live in snowy locations, but uh, it, it always puts me at peace. It always makes me feel good, these kinds of locations, you know? Just like with Mega Man Legends, Data will refill your health, he will refill your weapon energy, 
you go to him when you want to save your game, and anytime you're lost and you don't know where to go next because you've stopped playing the game for a bit or something, you can talk to Data, ask him, what should I do, Data? And he'll say, cook a pizza! And then he'll be like, no, no, don't cook a pizza! <laughs> but he'll tell you where to go and what you should be doing, and uh, right now I need to go into Yasyanki City to find a junk shop because maybe I'll find some parts that can get me into Forbidden Island, eh? I think that's how you pronounce it, Yasyanki, Yasyank. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling it Yasyanki because they don't say it in a cutscene. Anyway, let's enter the junk shop. Ain't no way you can do a dig, not with a body like that. Who'd take care of Maria if you got hurt? Don't go, Joe! Maria's been good to me, but I've got to do this. You're a pretty good mechanic, right? You can earn a good living fixing people's stuff. Maybe you just settle down for a while. Take it easy, you know? If something happens to me, you look after Maria and her daughter, okay? See ya. Wait! Joe! Ah, they never listen. That person, I feel like I know him. Like I've met him somewhere before. Really? Yeah, a long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Do you have any parts that can be used to build the machine in this diagram? Huh? Well, I'll be. Are you two friends of Joe's? Uh, I don't think so. Why? Well, it's just that I've seen this before, in his lab. You know the little shed near the flying ship dock? That's his lab. Joe's working on something that looks just like this there. Oh, how convenient! <laughs> Mega Man, this means that Joe must know my father. I've got to go talk to him. Roll, wait! You want to know about Joe? That's what we call him, but he's lost his memory, see? No one knows who he really is or where he came from. Not even Maria, who takes care of him. Maria, she's probably at the bar, but, uh, shouldn't you go after your friend? And yeah, I am going to continue with the plot line. Um, I can stop and explore Yasyanki City and find a whole bunch of items that can help Mega Man out, uh, but I figured I would save the exploration for part three, and I would cut right to the action in this part so people could get a, an idea of how the game is played and stuff, you know? So I'm just going to follow Roll. I'm not going to bother exploring Yasyanki yet, but I'll check it out later. So she just goes to a house, a little shed that's like right in front of where the flutter was. But again, you can explore the city if you want. I'm just choosing to advance the gameplay and, and do the first dungeon, because why not? It's easy to miss roll, though. You could go like right past her. Mega Man, I was thinking, what if there's more than just the dropship schematics? What if there's something else of my father's here? Something that could lead me to him? But... What if he's already dead? I don't know what I'd do if I found out he's dead. Oh boy. What do I say? What do I say? Uh... Don't worry, he's alive! Thanks, Mega Man. Can't give up hope, right? Alright, let's go. It's just like the blueprint. Maybe my father is here somewhere. Who are you? If you're looking for my dad, he's not here. He went to the ruins. That's probably a terrible voice. <laughs> dad? You mean Joe? That's my dad. Well, he will be soon anyway. Mom says once he goes to Forbidden Island and comes back, he'll be my dad. Say, is there anyone named Casket living here? No, I've never heard of anyone named Casket. What? What does that mean, Mega Man? I was so sure he was here. Let's find Joe and talk to him. Maybe he can answer your questions. I guess you're right. This is the closest I've gotten to my parents. Come on. So a lot of dialogue in the game doesn't have voice acting. There's a lot of scenes where you're talking to, like, Blucher and Beryl and stuff like this with the Joe plot where, like, they don't actually have voice acting, and that's why I'm going to be reading it. Uh, sort of like I, my Zero and ZX playthroughs. I'm gonna do ZX Advent eventually, goddammit. Stop asking for it. <laughs> Looks like there's a dropship part. There's something spray-painted on it. It says, 
I love daddy. Ah. I love my daddy. So we can assume this is a dropship that Roll has been next to a long, long time ago. So this has to be the exact same one that her father had. And this Joe guy has amnesia, so maybe he knows Roll's father. Huh? Huh? Either way, uh, Joe has gone off to the ruins, and it's right past this gateway, and that leads us into the field where we're going to be running into a whole bunch of Reaver bots because it's a very dangerous place. So we're basically going to the first dungeon of the game. And I guess I should go over the gameplay and the controls right now because we're finally getting into the thick of it. And the first thing you'll notice right off the bat as soon as you start playing Mega Man Legends 2 is how much better the controls are. For one thing, there is now analog support. In the original Legends, you know, you could only use the control pad, you couldn't use the analog controller to move Mega Man at all. Now you can use the left stick to move and stuff. And the right analog stick actually looks around and acts as a camera for the video game. So if you tilt up on the analog stick, you'll look down. You can tilt down on the analog stick, he'll look up. You can basically move the camera wherever you want, look wherever you want, and the camera is so great now that you can move it with the right analog stick, and that is much, much appreciated, let me tell you. Oh god, bunny! <laughs> I didn't mean to hit you. You, you! you jumped at me! I mean, oh god. You always have a map, no matter where you are. So here on Kalinka Island, I can look and see you know, all the areas I am, where the flutter is, and all that stuff. And the controls pretty much act exactly the same. You can change it to a whole bunch of different types of controls in the options menu. I'm using option type B, because I'm comfortable with that. And uh, when we're running around the field, we're going to be running into lots of snow. Lots of ominous snow, and uh, oh god, Reaverbots! Yeah, they sort of have an RPG battle kind of thing going on in uh, a lot of the fields of Mega Man Legends 2. Now when you're running around, Reaver bots will just pop up out of the ground and the music will change and you'll have to battle them or run away. So it's very RPG-like. Again, you don't have to fight them. You can easily just run away. Uh, but it's worth mentioning that now when you run around on the islands, sometimes Reaver bots will just pop up trying to kill you. And you can get Zenny from them through these refractors, you know. The smaller gray ones are worth 10, the green ones I believe are like 100 or something, but uh, all I need to know is that the purple ones are the best refractors in the game. If you find purple ones, you are, go you are good to go, you know? So we're in the first dungeon of the game, it's really not all that hard, it's the first segment of gameplay in the game, so you shouldn't have a problem with this, but... Uh, I like that they give you a map right up front, so like you already have a good layout of the place. It's pretty linear for the most part. It's a lot of square rooms connected to each other. But there's still lots of trinkets and lots of treasure chests and lots of holes to find as well uh, throughout the dungeons in Mega Man Legends 2, just like Legends 1. So you want to check out that stuff because you never know when you're going to find an item that can be used to make a special weapon, you know? Or a piece of armor that Mega Man can equip. That's all very, very, very important. Now, Roll's going that way, and that's where Joe is, but I'm going to go a different route because there's an item I can collect if I go this way. And I think you've noticed right now that uh, something very different from Mega Man Legends 1 is that when I lock onto enemies, I can now run anywhere I want while I lock onto them. In the original Mega Man Legends, you had to stand still when you locked onto enemies. You were always stuck in one place, I mean, you could still strafe and shoot in the first game, but you weren't going to be locked onto people when you did it. Now in Legends 2, when you lock onto enemies, Mega Man can move left, he can move down, he can move up, he can move right. You know, he can go pretty much wherever he wants while locked on, which is so freaking helpful. Another cool thing about the lock-on feature that I really appreciate is that it gives you this crosshairs, right? Like, it will be like red arrows pointing at the enemy, and... But it'll be red if he's, like, really, really far away. But if they're yellow arrows, then that means you can shoot him. Like, it's actually telling you how close you are uh, for your pellets to actually affect them. Because you still have the same kind of stats that you did in Mega Man Legends 1. You have attack, you have rapid, you have range, and you have energy. And you need range for your pellets to go further. And so, like, if your range is really, really small, you have to get super close to guys, and it's really helpful to have a crosshair that tells you, 
Oh, the arrows are red. That means you can't reach him. Oh, the arrows are yellow. That means you can reach him because it pretty much tells you how close you need to be. And if you don't want to get super, super close to guys, and then it tells you, okay, you can stop moving now. You're in firing range. So you have a good gauge to see how far you need to be from an enemy, and you can move around while locking on to people, and you can aim the camera wherever you want with the right analog stick. The controls are just so much better in this game. It is fantastic. This looks newer than everywhere else. It must have been discovered pretty recently. I think that man is in here somewhere up ahead. Are you picking up any Reaverbots, Roll? Yep, a lot of them. I'm also getting human life signs. But they're pretty weak. It looks like he might be hurt. You wait here, Roll. I'll get him. But... Roll? <laughs> Alright, good luck, Mega Man. Hey, I'm all for you being a hero, Roll, but you don't have a Mega Buster on you, okay? These things are pretty dangerous. You also don't have a Gustav. You're a technical engineer. Make a Gustav for yourself. <laughs> that would be awesome if Roll just had a big giant mecha and just followed Mega Man the whole way through, blasting everything. The Roll Bazooka. Oh god, that would be so overpowered. So, you know, going that alternate pathway, I found a broken model gun, and that's going to be useful for an item later. And I'm finding these treasure chests with a whole bunch of Zenny in them, because I need Zenny to buy stuff from the junk shop, whether it's upgrades, armor pieces for Mega Man, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. So it's always a good idea to get Zenny. Every time you go to the field, every time you go to a dungeon, the Reaverbots will respawn, so you'll always have a way to get money, you know, you'll always be able to get money, but it's gonna be very grindy. There's a lot of expensive things in Legends 2. Some things are literally like 100,000 zenny to buy. <laughs> Which is just like, oh god. And when you're upgrading your special weapons with Roll, you still gotta give her money so that she can upgrade them. It's very much like Legends 1, so uh... Zenny makes the world go round. Although I do know a pretty good exploit uh, pretty early in the game where I can get a lot of money really, really quickly. And uh, I'll show that off when we get to it, but, um... Yeah. I already know the layout of this dungeon, so I know where all the treasure chests and stuff are. Old hover jets! Ooh! You remember what the old hover jets were used to make in the original Legends? If you do, I got good news for you, that item will be coming in the game much earlier than it did in Legends 1, so uh, yeah. Can't wait to get that. We have the jump spring still from Legends 1, we can jump as high so that we can like reach the top of houses and whatnot. Um, but we don't have a helmet, we don't have jet skates, we don't have anything from Legends 1 other than our Mega Buster and the jump springs. That's pretty much it. We can jump super high, that's the only thing roll kept, goddammit. <laughs> but again, these Reaverbots, it's the first dungeon, they're not really much of a hassle to deal with. Stop. Don't go on. Too dangerous. Don't talk. You're hurt pretty bad. I can't do anything for you here. I'm taking you back to the surface. I'm all for that idea, but... Seems I woke up the big Reaverbot inside here. Once he's fully charged up, he might leave here and go after the city. You've got to stop him before he... Ugh! Mister, are you alright? What is it, Mega Man? Is he... It's alright. He's just passed out, that's all. You wait there, Roll. I've got some work to do. It's bleeding pretty badly. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, you know what that means, folks. A giant reaver bot we have to stop before it destroys the city. I guess that means we're in for a boss fight. And then we could pick up this Final Fantasy crystal. <laughs> but let's do this. Intro boss. Okay, it's still the intro boss, though, so it's not really all that big of a hassle. You get behind him... And now that you can run and lock on, that's super, super easy. But uh, you just keep shooting him in his little pink crystal tail, or in the ass, whatever you prefer. And uh, he just keeps taking lots of damage from it, and he keeps holding his bottom, and uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> 
You just take out the intro boss by constantly shooting him in the ass. <laughs> Don't forget to pick up the refractors he drops, because uh, there's a purple one. I think that's a worth uh, 5,000 all by itself, which is a good number. If it's not 5,000, it's at least 500 or something, but uh, yeah. Nothing else in the boss room, just the boss himself, but... Uh, just keep shooting him in the ass. Roll, what are you doing here? I can't leave him. If he dies, my chances of finding my father die too. I guess you're right. Alright, let's get him back to town. Wait. The refractor. You've got to get the refractor. Unless you do, the machines will stay active. Roger. The reaver bots will still be here, at last I checked, but either way. He got a refractor! <laughs> And that's it for this part, folks. Uh, stay tuned for part three, where we explore Yasyanki City. Till then.